Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Pass the FE Exam video. Now in today's special episode, I will guide you through the essential topics outlined in the ethics section of the Fundamentals of Engineering Reference Handbook, equipping you with the knowledge and also the insights necessary to navigate the complexities of ethical conduct in the engineering profession. Now together we're going to be exploring the principles that underpin ethical decision making, ensuring that you're well prepared to uphold the highest standards of integrity and professionalism. And this video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. And when you take a live online course, PPI guarantees that you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere that you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all of the options available for PE exam prep. Now let's define first what is engineering ethics. Now ethics are the moral codes that guide the actions and also the decisions of our everyday lives with one another. In the world of engineering, ethical decisions are pivotal in ensuring the safety, well-being, and also the welfare of the public. These ethical decisions range from a variety of virtues such as integrity, honesty, and also objectivity, which engineers must uphold in their professional lives. For instance, when an engineer works on a critical infrastructure project such as a bridge, they have a moral duty to prioritize public safety over any personal or even financial gain. Here are the essential topics in the ethics section covered in the Fundamentals of Engineering Reference Handbook. Number one, model rules, section 240.15, rules of professional conduct. This section outlines the principles aimed at safeguarding the public's health, safety, and also welfare, along with upholding integrity and also rigorous standards in engineering and surveying practices. Licensed professionals are required to give paramount importance to public welfare, certify documents in compliance with established norms, and also report to authorities if their professional discretion is disregarded in a manner that jeopardizes the public safety. Additionally, they are expected to furnish comprehensive and unbiased information in professional documents and offer professional judgments grounded in factual expertise and proficient assessment. Number two. The Model Law in Section 110.20. In this section, it provides definitions related to the practice of engineering and surveying, clarifying the terms used in the Act, including various professional titles and statuses. Let's start with engineer. An engineer is a person possessing the qualifications to engage in engineering practice established through education, training, and also professional experience. Next is a professional engineer. And this is an individual duly licensed in a specific engineering discipline or branch. And then we have a retired professional engineer who is a licensed professional engineer who has elected not to renew their license. We also have engineering intern who is a person that is certified by the board. And then we also have a practice of engineering. And this is activities necessitating engineering expertise and experience with professional impacts on public health, safety and welfare. This includes tasks such as planning, designing, coordination, and technical submissions. Number three, the model law in section 130.10. Here it outlines the requirements for licensure as a professional engineer or a surveyor. Eligibility includes good character, meeting education and experience criteria, passing exams, and submitting references. For engineers, there are stages, engineering intern certification and licensure as a professional engineer. Education, examination, and experience requirements must be met. Licensure by committee is also possible for qualified applicants. The section also references surveying requirements. And these criteria ensure that licensed professionals meet the necessary standards for the practice. 
All right, number four, the model law in section 150.10. Detailing grounds for disciplinary action against licensees and interns, the board has the authority to suspend, revoke, fine, or refuse to issue or renew a license or certification for various reasons. These could include fraud, negligence, misconduct, criminal convictions, failure to comply with the law or regulations, discipline by other jurisdictions, providing false information, aiding violations, practicing outside of competence, unethical conduct, substance abuse, and more. The board may also impose fines based on factors such as deterrence, severity of the violation, risk to the public, economic benefits gained, the consistency with past fines. These provisions ensure accountability and protection of the public in the engineering and surveying professions. Next, we have number five, the model law in section 150.30. This section outlines grounds for disciplinary action against unlicensed individuals in the fields of engineering and surveying. Now, the board has the authority to fine and recover costs from unlicensed individuals who engage in the practice of engineering or surveying without proper licensure, use restricted professional terms, present false credentials, commit fraud, impersonate licenses, or use expired or non-existent licenses. The fine for each offense cannot exceed a specified amount, and each day of continued violation may be considered a separate offense. Factors such as deterrence, circumstances of the violation, risk to the public, economic benefits gained, public interest, and consistency with past fines may be taken into account when determining the fine amount. The aim of these provisions is to regulate and protect the public from unlicensed individuals practicing in the engineering and surveying domains. Next, we have number six, the model law in section 160.10. It establishes the general requirements for obtaining a certificate of authorization for firms practicing or offering engineering or surveying services. Firms engaging in these activities must obtain a certificate of authorization from the board, except in cases where the firm performs engineering or surveying exclusively for itself, its parent company, or its subsidiary. The Secretary of State is prohibited from accepting organizational papers or issuing certificates to firms that include the words engineer, engineering, surveyor, surveying, or related variations in their objectives or name unless the board has issued a certificate of authorization or an eligibility letter. Additionally, the Secretary of State cannot authorize trade names, trademarks, or service marks that contain these restricted words except for licensees and firms with valid certificates of authorization. These provisions are in place to ensure that proper regulation and control are used among professional titles and marks in engineering and surveying fields. Number seven, the model law in section 160.70. It outlines the grounds for disciplinary action against firms holding a certificate of authorization. The board is empowered to suspend, revoke, fine, or refuse to issue restore or renew a certificate of authorization for various violations. These violations include fraud, negligence, incompetence, misconduct, criminal convictions, failure to comply with the law or board regulations, discipline by other jurisdictions, false statements, aiding in violations, and unethical conduct. Firms may also be fined for each offense with the amount determined by the board based on factors such as deterrence, severity, and public interest. Additionally, the board can impose sanctions on firms when their managing agents or officers are found guilty for violating the law or regulations, including probation, fines, reprimand, or revocation of certificate of authorization. Additionally, the board can impose sanctions on firms when their managing agents or officers are found guilty of violating the law or regulations and this includes probation, fines, reprimands, and also revocation of the certificate of authorization. Now let's use a sample scenario here. Now let's use the name Mario. And Mario is a licensed engineer working for a construction firm. Now he's responsible for overseeing the construction of a high rise building. Now during the construction process, Mario becomes aware of a significant structural defect that could potentially compromise the safety of the building. Now, he knows that immediate action was required to rectify that issue. 
Now, which of the following actions aligns with the licensee's obligations to the public? First, A. Mario ignores the structural defect as it may cause delays and additional costs to the project. B. Mario informs their employer to take appropriate measures to address the structural defect promptly. C. Mario conceals the defect to avoid damaging the reputation of his firm. Or is it D. Mario waits until the project is completed and then anonymously reports the defect to the local authorities. The correct answer is B, that Mario informs his employer and takes appropriate measures to address the structural defect promptly. Now, here's an explanation of this example that we just given here. Now, according to the model rules of professional conduct, licensees have a primary responsibility to safeguard the health, safety, and also the welfare of the public. Now, in this scenario, Mario's discovery of a structural defect poses potential risk to the safety of the building and also the occupants of the building as well. To fulfill his obligation to the public, Mario needs to promptly inform his employer and take appropriate actions to address that defect. And by doing so, he prioritizes the public's safety over personal concerns and ensures that necessary measures are taken to rectify that issue. Now, as I conclude, it's imperative to recognize the vital role of regulatory frameworks in maintaining the integrity and also the professionalism in engineering and surveying. Now, model rules set standards and guide disciplinary actions against violations like fraud and unethical conduct, prioritizing public interest protection. Disciplinary measures, including suspension and fines, stress the importance of ethical compliance for both individuals and firms. Now, upholding these rules fortifies trust and reliability in engineering and surveying, ensuring societal well-being. So I hope that you all found this week's video to be very helpful. And in upcoming videos, we're going to be answering more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems for you all. Past the FE exam will publish videos weekly. So please be sure to click on that subscribe button as you're going to be getting expert tips and tricks, including practice problems and also solutions weekly. So when we send these out to ensure that you're going to pass that FE exam. And I encourage you all to ask questions in the comments that we're going to be reading and responding to in future videos. So if there's a specific topic that you want us to cover or a question that you want to have answered, be clear, pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you all next week.